If you want to know why electricity keeps getting more expensive, this is a problem no one explains clearly. We don't just have a generation problem. We have a connection problem. We could build thousands of megawatts of new power tomorrow, solar, storage, wind, even fossil fuel plants, and most of it still wouldn't be allowed to turn on. Not because the power isn't there, but because it's stuck waiting for permission to connect to the grid. We're gonna break this down piece by piece, but before we do, click that like, subscribe, and the alert bell. It's free. Now, let's get into this. Interconnection. What is it exactly? Interconnection is simply the process of getting permission to connect a new power source to the grid. Before a single electron can flow, the utility has to study a few things, including whether the local transformer can handle it, whether the feeder can handle it, whether upstream substations need upgrades, and whether transmission lines are impacted. Sounds reasonable, right? The problem isn't that we do interconnection studies. The problem is how slow, outdated, and overloaded the process has become. So right now, across the U.S., there are thousands of gigawatts of projects stuck in interconnection queues. Not proposed, not conceptual. Fully developed projects, many with land, permits, financing, and equipment lined up, just waiting for permission to connect. Some projects are waiting three, five, even seven years just for interconnection approval. So why is this such a problem now? Well, the interconnection system was designed decades ago for a world where power plants were few and big, utilities controlled everything, low growth was slow and predictable. That world is gone. Now we have distributed generation, storage all over the place, data centers popping up overnight, AI loads measured in gigawatts, and electrification happening faster than forecasted. Neither the grid nor the interconnection process has evolved to handle this level of volume or the speed of today's demand. Here's another piece of this broken system that almost nobody talks about. Utilities and grid operators, they don't get rewarded for moving interconnection faster. They get rewarded for avoiding risk. So every new interconnection, it creates more engineering work. It triggers potential system upgrades, adds operational and reliability complexity, and increases the chance of something going wrong. So the safest move, institutionally, becomes to study it more, delay it longer, push it into the next queue cycle. And it's not because the engineers don't care, and it's certainly not because they're incompetent. It's because the system punishes speed and rewards caution, especially at scale. When new generation can't connect, supply stays artificially tight, congestion costs rise, Utilities relied on older, more expensive plants to produce energy, and then ratepayers pay more. This is one of the quiet reasons electricity prices keep climbing, even when cheaper power exists. And during peak events, that missing capacity is a difference between stability and emergency alerts. This isn't just a clean energy issue. Interconnection delays affect all forms of power generation, from solar and wind to fossil fuel and nuclear. Even transmission upgrades are affected. If it has to touch the grid, it's stuck in the same bottleneck. So when you hear someone say, just build more power, remember this. If it can't connect, it can't help. The interconnection crisis is one of the biggest and least talked about drivers of rising cost and reliability risk in the U.S. In the next episode, we'll talk about the problem that sits just upstream of this one. And that's transmission. Because even when power does connect, we can't move it where it's needed. So hit subscribe. This series is building toward the full picture. We'll catch you next time.